Hi and welcome to this Walking the Wheel call, a very exciting call because we are right on the cusp of Gene Key Gate Hexagram 61 to 60. And this is also the cusp between Capricorn and Aquarius. This is also this year in 2024 where we're going to have Pluto going from Capricorn into Aquarius for the very last time that it's not it's only going to go back for a little while in September this year and otherwise it's going to be for 20 years in Aquarius this is very big for us this is one of the indicators of the Aquarian age so we will speak a bit about that today I will start with a more general presentation of the 60 and the 61 and then I have a few slides if we want to go into that a little later, where we can weave all this with Pluto as well. But let's start with the 61 and the 60 and where we are right now. So the two archetypes today are the mystic and the magician. So the mystic is in transit from January 11th to January 15th. It's the gate of mystery in the I Ching. We call this hexagram inner truth. In the Gene Keys, it goes from the shadow of psychosis to the city of sanctity, and the pathway for this archetype or this Gene Key is inspiration. The Magician is in transit from January 16th to January 21st. This gate is called acceptance. In the I Ching, we call it limitation. No, In the Gene Keys frequency band, this goes from the shadow of limitation to the city of justice, and it is the pathway of realism. Here we are just going to see in the I Ching, you can see the 61 and the 60 are here with the lower trigram of Lei, which has two yang lines and one yin line. So all these archetypes that you see here and all these hexagrams that you see here are going to have the lake hexagram on the bottom. That energy is the same thing as the energy we have in Jinki 58. This Jinki 58 is lake over lake. So that's the base trigram, the, the energy, the element that's there for all those hexagrams that we're in right now. You can see that we have that here in the coloring of Gaia as well, which is the 19, the 60, and the 61. That's the foundational energy for, for this coloring ring and these hexagrams. In the case of the 61, the braid would become that psychosis is the unease of that dissatisfaction in the shadow frequency. Inspiration is intuitive vitality for the gift level. And then sanctity is the clarity of bliss for the acidic level. And we have one more chance to understand the geometry. So in the case of the 60, we have water over lake. And the energy of water is the same as Jinki 29, because Jinki 29 is water over water. So here the braid becomes in the shadow frequency, limitation is half-hearted dissatisfaction, gift level, realism is commitment with vitality, and civic level, justice is devotional bliss. Here we're looking at those hexagrams from an astrological perspective, where we're going to have the whole hexagram of gene key or gate 61 in Capricorn and we're going to have part of hexagram 60. Capricorn is the wise elder, the teacher, our ancestors, its service to others through the grounded intent to preserve planet earth. It is the third time in the wheel that we meet this earth element. So first we have Taurus, then we have Virgo and the third time around we're going to have Capricorn. However, it's cardinal, so it's starting that earth element. Capricorn is the trunk and roots that provide organic structure and reach into the lineage of our ancestors. And then, like I said before, the last part of gate 60 is going to be in Aquarius. Aquarius is the revolutionary change agent. It's service to self-growth through the expansion of consciousness. And this is also the third time that we are meeting the air element in the wheel. So first time is in Gemini, the uh, second time is in Libra, and third time is here in Aquarius. Aquarius is fixed air. Aquarius is the energized air of the ethers that calls our consciousness to the cosmos. And uh, we are going to have Saturn as the ruler of uh, Capricorn and Uranus as the main ruler of Aquarius. 
looking at the human design body graph, we have the 61 in the head center. This is a pressure center. This is about inspiration and sense making. And the frequency band for this center, the whole entire center in the shadow frequency is pressure. In the acidic frequency is consciousness. And then the human pathway, the gift level is seeking. But like we said before, this is the gate of mystery. Here are the other two archetypes, the artist and the detective also live in the center of this hub. Then we're looking at the 60. So it's on, on the exact opposite. So if we have on the pressure center on the top, we have the 61 pointing down. Well, the pressure center and motor on the bottom, we have the 60 pointing up in this middle pillar, in this kind of Kundalini microcosmic orbit. Uh, we have the 60, which is in the root center that is about foundation and stability. Here, the shadow is stress. The city's evolution and the human pathway, the gift level is drive. And in the root center, we have a lot of gates. We have nine gates. And we also call these the nine fuels. They come from a motor and they are the fuel for different things in, in the body graph, in our lives. And the 60 is a very raw energy that we have in this whole middle pillar. And we call the 14 on here on the other side, a powerhouse, because it's that kind of raw pulse, raw energy that comes from the middle of our being and goes through the whole chakra pillar. And here we're looking at the whole channel, which is a process, right? So when two harmonic gates meet each other, they create a channel. They're going to define the center that are on both sides of the channel. In this case, with the 60 and the 24, we are speaking about the channel of awareness. This is a design of a thinker. The theme here, so long as you are not using this to resolve your own life your mind is always capable of inspiring someone else someone else to see life in a new light you inspire others to think about life's mysteries i love the frequency band for the whole channel so if you have this channel i want you to learn <laughs> the integral human design frequency band for the channel, not only for each one of the gates. So how does it work? Well, when you have the shadow of this, these two gates, addiction and psychosis, that becomes blankness. When you have invention and inspiration, that becomes contemplation. And when you have silence and sanctity, that becomes mystery, right? And if you only have one of those two gates, when somebody comes in and has the other side, or when we have a planet, you actually have these themes activated in your body graph. So whether it's people or transits, they're bringing in, you can feel this whole process that's happening in the channel of awareness. And one more time, we're going to look at a channel. So we have the 360 that is, like we said before, on the opposite side. So here it's going to define the root center and the sacral center. Uh, here we have energy with, which fluctuates and initiates. The theme, you are an agent of evolution itself. You bring something new with everything you touch. Ex accept the limitation um, of not knowing when the next quantum leap will occur. So be careful <laughs> because there is some depression here. The format channels can be a little bit tricky because you know that something needs to change. A cycle has to be over with something is still, but needs to move, but it's not really you that decide because it's really life that is going to tell you when the cycle is over, when the pulse is coming, when it's time to move. So here we do the same thing with the whole frequency band uh, for the channel. So when we have chaos and limitation, that is depression. When we have innovation and realism, that is mutation and the combination of innocence and justice. That is glory. So here we're looking for both of those gates at individual circuitry. I was speaking about that before, that whole middle pillar is individual circuitry. You also see in the middle of the sides of the body graph, you're also gonna have individual circuitry. And we also have the centering circuit here in, in the very center, which is part of individual circuitry. For both the 61 and the 60, they are part of the knowing circuit, which is when we take away the centering circuit. So here, the main keynote is empowerment. The format energy, like we just saw, is about pulse and mutation. 
And the sense here is ac acoustic. It's about hearing. So part of like how I usually explain it is like in, inside of you, you hear that you don't know. Like, I don't know. It doesn't move. There's nothing. And then suddenly it's like, oh, I know. I feel it. It's moving. Right. So it's like inner hearing of not really knowing, of being sometimes in that melancholy, in that kind of existential void. And there you're floating around and you, you can't hear. And then suddenly it moves and you hear and you, and you feel it's exciting. <laughs> in the wheel, we are in the quarter of mutation where purpose is fulfilled through transformation. A lot of these have to do in some way with death and transformation. All these gates, it's the fourth of the wheel. All these gates are going to have two yang lines on the bottom in their geometry. Something we don't do all the time, but I think it's interesting because actually this is the only place in the wheel where we don't have a godhead. So we did a course with Kat on this uh, or an exploration last year. And to me, this is one of the most interesting places in the wheel. So here again, you have the same wheel we just looked at. You have the quarters that we just looked at. And there is one place in the wheel where there isn't a godhead. So all these, you see, they're godheads. Here we have something that we call the keepers of the wheel. And that is exactly where the wheel ends and begins, right? So gate 61 and gate 60 are the last gates that are before we come into the rave new year or the Chinese new year where gate 41 starts. So we're here on the right on the cusp and there is no Godhead because actually beginnings and endings in some way, they are illusions. They're, it's our perception that something ends and something else starts. But it's actually just a spiral of continuity. We can speak about it as genetic continuity, or we could speak about it in a more spiritual sense, right? As the wheel and the spirals so of life and evolution. So we have those four gates, which is the 60 and the 61, the 19 and the 41, that are the keepers of the wheel that hold the illusion together so that in some way, all these symbols or all these godheads can do their job and keeps us conditioned keeps us in the program because that's the matrix, the program that we are stuck in, right? But we're only stuck until we realize that we aren't stuck. So human design is an amazing way of becoming aware of the program so that we're not slaves of the programs anymore. We are observers of the program and we can actually navigate it based on Australian authority. And we can even become a bit spiritual about it thanks to the language of gene keys and walking the golden path and feeding our own individual purpose and our co-creation with others through that purpose when we are walking the, the golden path. So here, like I just said, this part of the wheel, we don't have a Godhead. We have those four gates that are keeping the wheel. And isn't it interesting that the code and ring of Gaia, those three is just here. It's like the program of earth is held here. And maybe also the liberation of the slavery is there as well. And then we have co the code and ring of origin, which is the 41 that we'll speak about in a few weeks. And I'm just going to give you some keywords here about where we are in the wheel. And if you want to go deeper, you can contact me for that course or we'll have other opportunities to go deeper. But yes, beginning and ending. This is really where we see the wheel. We see yin and yang in those gates that are there. We see that it's on the cusp of Capricorn and Aquarius. The bridge between the ending and the beginning, the 60 and the 41. Is it not an illusion, actually? We see that it goes round, so it's not, not actually beginning and ends. It is about cycles. It is about the transition. There's no Godhead here. Uh, the whole thing is about trial and error in the experimental way, right? When it comes to our evolution, when it comes to... The, and when we speak about death and rebirth, we can also speak about the bardal states in between. We can speak about where we come from. Our form, our body is terminal. However, the soul is in terminal. And part of that, we can understand it by going deep into gate 61 and understand about inner truth and great mystery, right? The spirit is going to live on the limitation of the form of the body. But there is still a continuity because it's just a form that is changing shapes, we could say. And so what's the secret of the form of being here in this vessel? So these are all themes and questions that can be part of today's conversation as well. And here I just wanted to bring in this physiology. So remind us that we are in this middle pillar where on the bottom we have the colon, on the top we have the pineal gland. And 
I would love them to be in contact <laughs> in your life because they are both super important. So the very bottom of our perineum, our colon, everything that's on the bottom of the body that sometimes in spiritual circles we want to forget, it's really part of our divinity, as is also, of course, the pineal gland, but there is no hierarchy in the different parts of the body. It's all part of divinity. Just reminding us again about the frequency band, the human pathway is always the gift frequency. That's where we will want to find a certain stability. So for the 61, that is inspiration. And then the human pathway of realism uh, on, in the 60s. So to not say, oh, the old structures, let's just burn them. No, you could take those structures and use them as stepping stones for the next thing. So be realistic about it. It's not about burning up. It's about integrating, right? It's about in some way using what's been in order to be able to evolve and grow. Let's stop here. L know that we have in our back pocket, we have the transits, the, the chart of today. We also have a little bit more in Pluto if we want to go there. I hope I gave you some food for thought <laughs> with this long presentation. Please come in and let's start the dialogue.